Hi guys, it's Christine and today I'm going to be doing my October review and it's so insane that we are in the beginning of November. There's 60 more days until the end of 2016 and I feel like there's so much still that I want to do in 2016. And part of that is because October has really been kind of a month of resolutions for me. I've been really into kind of I guess self-improvement this month making goals and like sticking to them and so one of my favorites for this month is actually something that so one of my favorites for this month is actually something I've had all year and that is my passion planner and this is the large version they also sell a smaller one which I think I'm going to be switching to for 2017 because this is a little hard to carry around but what I love about this planner, and there's so many things I love about this planner, is their weekly layout. And here they have what they call the space of infinite possibility. And that's really a place where you can like take notes and stuff. But what they also have is these free PDF downloads that you can print out. And they have a financial one so you could track your finances and track your spending throughout the week. And then they also have one which is their habit tracker where you can write like certain habits you want to establish here. Like go to the gym four times a week which is actually one of the habits I'm trying to establish. And then you could check off the days that you actually go and then you can reward yourself if you like for you know successfully doing whatever habit that is. So another favorite I have this month is, again, something I've had for a while, and that is the Body Shop Tea Tree Skin Clearing Facial Wash. And it's just one of those products that I've kind of used, I wouldn't say consistently, but it is a regular staple in my skincare routine. And it's a cleanser that never breaks me out, and it works perfect on my acne and controlling my acne and I just love it so much. Recently I've started to use it as my everyday cleanser and it just kind of renewed my love for this product. So it's something to be appreciated. Another product I want to talk about, I mentioned briefly in my empties video, is the Tori Cosmetics Tea Tree Cool cooling shampoo and I do deal with psoriasis and I have psoriasis on my scalp. Using products that have tea tree oil is pretty good for my psoriasis. It's a shampoo that has this really lovely cooling effect when you're using it and I love that. If you don't like that feeling, I don't recommend it. It smells wonderful. It smells like peppermint and tea tree and eucalyptus and I love all those scents and it's a huge bottle. I got this at Marshalls for $13. I think with taxes it was closer to $15 but this has been one of my absolute favorites. I'm not sure where I'm going to pick up another bottle. I've looked online and on Amazon they're selling it for like $35, which is not okay because I got this originally for 13, so I'm hoping if I go back to Marshalls they will have this in stock, but who knows. So I do have a few makeup products I want to talk about, and one of them is the Innisfree Ultra Fine brow cara and I haven't tried it a lot um, I don't know how long lasting it is but I have tested it on my eyebrows and I love the way it looks it comes with this really tiny spoolie so it's perfect for applying on your eyebrows it's not super messy and it gives just enough tint to my rather full eyebrows that it stays rather natural but it also fills in areas that have less hair and so it just kind of evens out my eyebrows like if you look at it I have no brow product on and that's kind of what my eyebrows look like but with this it'll add just a little bit more pigment and it's really fast and quick so I love this I greatly prefer using this over an actual brow pencil just because brow pencils tend to make my eyebrows look too harsh or fake and drawn in um, maybe it's my application style, I don't know, but I feel like because of how full my brows are, this product is perfect for me. Another Innisfree product I want to talk about is the Innisfree Always New Auto Liner. This product is amazing. It's actually the eyeliner I'm wearing now, and I got the brown one because I wanted something a little more subtle and not as harsh as black, but if you just like... It comes out super smooth and creamy. The formulation is amazing and actually doesn't smudge that much. One of the unique features is that on the inside, I think there's like a sharpener. So when you put the cap back on, it kind of resharpens the pencil. 
so that's pretty great because I've always hated using brow pencils and eyeliner pencils that you have to sharpen because I don't have like a designated sharpener for those. I mean maybe, okay, maybe that's like a fault of my own. I should get one, but I haven't and I really like something that's like automatic like this. So another product I want to talk about is a makeup primer and that is the NYX Honey Do Me Up primer and it's supposed to have honey and gold flakes in it. It's the primer I use today and I think it works really well for my drier skin. I don't think it would work as well on oilier skin because it does add a little bit of moisture to the skin and it's not as mattifying. It's not as mattifying as oilier skin types need it to be but it's really pretty. I think it's really pretty in this packaging which is partly why I bought it. It's a primer that I've been looking to try for a really long time because I think it's so pretty and it also smells really good. It smells a little bit like a floral honey scent. It's obviously manufactured, it's not a natural scent, but it smells pretty good and I like it so far. And my last makeup product I want to talk about is an eyeshadow palette and it is an eyeshadow palette that Bubs Beauty did in collaboration with BH Cosmetics and it's called Be by Bubs Beauty and I bought this palette because I really want to support Bubs. She's a YouTuber that I've been following since middle school and it's so weird because I've been following her since I was like 12 and it's been like 8 years now. So I've really seen her since like she was in Ireland and then she moved to Hong Kong and then she got married and I've just been there the watching her videos the entire time. And this palette, I got it for the launch price which was way cheaper. I think it was $12. I'm not sure but it looks like this. It has cardboard packaging and what I love about this palette is that the colors are extremely wearable. It is what I have on my eyes right now. My light kind of washes out the eyeshadows, but they are pretty pigmented. They are a little bit powdery, and I just love some of the colors in here. Maybe not the lilac. It's not something I would normally reach for, but it is nice to have as a pop of color. But I love pretty much all the other colors. These are so gorgeous. They're not the most pigmented eyeshadows, but they are buildable. Some of them do come off as a little bit more powdery, like the purple one definitely is pretty powdery, but I think for the price of this eyeshadow palette, it's about one dollar or so per eyeshadow, which is really good, and the quality is still decent. Like, some of them are powdery, yes, but they are gorgeous colors that you could definitely build on. I haven't had an issue with Fallout. Ugh, I love Bub so much, and I think it's so great that she, the first time she released an eyeshadow palette in collaboration with a company, it's one that's so accessible for her viewers and her fans. Moving away from makeup, I read two books this October. The first book I finished this October is called Bone by Fei Mian Ying. And this book is about a Chinese-American family that lives in Chinatown. I want to say it's around the 1960s, 1970s. I'm not really sure when it's set, but it's definitely not set in contemporary times. And it follows this family of three girls and their mom and her husband. And so the book really tells the story of these characters, mainly how they're dealing with their grief because one of the sisters commits suicide. And so the story does jump a lot back and forth in times like before. So there's a lot of scenes from their childhood, but it's mostly centered on the narrator who is the oldest sister, Layla, and how she's reacting to her sister's death, how the people around them, and then there's also this aspect of a cultural view of death. There's a lot of descriptions in the book of like Chinese mourning rituals, how they deal with grief. So one example is that Ona actually commits suicide and is found a week or so before Chinese New Year, and for Chinese people, um, that's a sign of bad luck and a lot of people didn't actually attend Ono's funeral because they 
didn't want to bring the death with them that bad luck into the new year and so it does go into a little bit of like the superstition chinese superstitions surrounding death and it was just a really interesting read another book i finished in october is the happiness project by gretchen rubin and this book is partially why i was so inspired this month to you know really create goals and stick with them and have these resolutions and so her book is about how for a year she was exploring what it means to be happy how you can be a happier person and month by month it's so interesting she like decided to focus on different goals so like the first month January she wanted to focus on how like boosting energy so her resolutions were that she should go to sleep earlier exercise more you know reorganize stuff like that and it's just so interesting because there's a lot of stuff thrown in here there's some like psychology principles like the fundamental attribution error and stuff that I learned in other classes that were tossed into this book but also there's just all sorts of interesting like helpful advice for really how to be happy and I think one of the main takeaways from this book for me is that to be happy you really need to feel like you're growing like have a sense of growth and for me that's to have goals that I'm working towards for me to feel like I'm growing I really need to have like goals I'm working towards and an example is one I talked about earlier is that I want to be healthier so I am tracking how many times I go to the gym to make sure I go and so this has been really inspirational there's just all sorts of stuff in here there's stuff about parenting because she has two daughters she has like even in the back she has like tips on how to like make a schedule of regular exercise tips on what to do if you forgot somebody's name it's just like a really helpful book I also want to talk about anime that I'm watching and the fall anime season has started and two animes I'm watching one is Haikyuu and it is season two and it's just this volleyball anime and it's like kind of like a typical sports anime they have like this goal of like reaching this like tournament and I just love it I love the characters so much and it's just so fun to watch and like to see them improve you know I don't know there's something about sports animes that really like captures my attention and then for the second one it is also kind of a sports anime but I feel like it has a more interesting twist on the genre because of how comedic it is like it's not like the super super huge focus on the sport itself and that is Yuri on Ice and Yuri on Ice is about figure skating it's basically about the main character Yuri and his goal of making it to the Grand Prix final it's just so different than how I imagined it I imagined it as like very like goal focused but there's like it's there's so much comedic aspects to Yuri on Ice that makes it so enjoyable to watch even if you're not all that interested in figure skating so that's pretty much all I have for my October review I hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time bye